Unit 1. Listening. Exercise 1. 1. We went to some incredible places. A place which has the most famous mosque in the whole of North Africa. We went in and then some boys came and, well, they wanted to show us around. Well, we were a bit dubious, but they did anyway. After that, they asked us to come to a carpet museum and they said, really, you have to see that. It's wonderful. There are old Tunisian carpets. So we decided to go with them. And guess what? The museum turned out to be a carpet shop owned by the father of one of the boys. And of course, he wanted to sell us a carpet. We actually didn't want to buy one because we didn't have enough space in our backpacks. But finally, he managed to persuade us to buy one. So my friend, yeah, she bought one. To thank us for that, the boys guided us around the town and we ended up going down these really narrow alleyways and we had no idea where we were because this whole city was like a maze. Then we came to a house and we realised it was the house of one of the boys and we were invited in by his family and we had tea, coffee, nice biscuits and it was a really, really good experience. Two. My story is actually a bit bizarre. I was going to Florida and first we took a plane to New York and then to Florida and during the trip from New York to Florida I felt that I had to go to the bathroom and in front of me there was a girl, she was about perhaps 25, very good looking, who went into the bathroom but she didn't lock the door, it was still on the, um, uh, it wasn't completely locked. And I thought that maybe I should knock on the door and tell her that her door wasn't completely closed. But I didn't. And I also had a funny feeling that this wouldn't turn out well. And I was right, because about 30 seconds later, the door flew open and there she was on the loo. And she gave out a loud shriek and me and the rest of the queue just stood there in disbelief, totally in shock. <laughs> Three. Four years ago, I went to Indonesia with my parents and my sister which was, of course, a very beautiful holiday. First, we went to Sumatra, and um, there we met a man who wanted to show us his village, so we went off with him. The village was very small, perhaps 500 inhabitants, maybe less, and it was very special because the people there had never seen tourists before. So they acted like, yeah, they treated us like very special people, which we aren't, of course. They were a bit shy at first, but then somehow we managed to communicate. And what I realised is that people, good people, are the same perhaps the world over. Four. Well, with a few friends from my rowing club, we went on a weekend in the middle of winter in Holland. When we got there, we couldn't even get out on the water. It was way too cold. And we were in this big um, shed, the size of a football pitch. There was no heating. The water was coming through the roof. The whole time it was windy and terrible. We went there by bike and it was about three hours, I think. And we just, you know, went on automatic pilot and went on and on and on. And in this shed, we couldn't get warm and people started getting really irritable and we started fighting over stupid, stupid things. For example, who has to cook dinner, who has to do the dishes. And we were really nasty to each other. And we had to sleep all together in one corner, otherwise we'd freeze to death. There were about 25 of us all huddled together, trying to sleep and hating each other. <laughs> Five. Whenever people talk about dolphins, they always say they're very intelligent creatures. But I never really grasped the idea of how intelligent they are until this summer, when I went to Zanzibar, which is a little island off Africa. And one of the things I did there was actually swimming with dolphins. When you go there, there are a few locals, and you go on a boat with them, and even before you've seen anything, their enjoyment really rubs off on you. They're laughing all the time, and when they find some dolphins, they're really proud of themselves because they found some dolphins, and they know that you're really going to love it. What you have to do then is you have to jump in the water. When the boat stops, you jump in the water, and if you're lucky, the dolphins come straight at you. And then they dive really deep in the water, so you can't see them anymore. They hide themselves, and then they come back. And when you see the look in their eyes, you see they're just making fun of you. And for me, that's proof of how smart dolphins really are. Unit 2. Listening. 
Exercise two. First of all, we'd like to know a little bit about you. So, Rebecca, where are you from in England? I'm from Nottingham in the East Midlands.、Mm -hmm. And where are you from, Amanda? I'm originally from Bath near Bristol. And have you studied any foreign languages, Amanda? Well, for a while, I studied Spanish, but I found it very difficult and gave up. Rebecca, I did French and German at school, and then I learned a little bit of Italian when I went to work in Italy. So for a couple of weeks, we had a crash course in Italian. That's about it. Unit two, listening, exercise three. Now I'd like you to ask each other something about your interests and leisure activities. So ask each other questions. Rebecca, could you start, please? Uh, do you have any hobbies, Amanda?、Hmm. Well, my hobby is going to the theatre and going to the pictures. I know it's not much of a hobby, but I don't really have a lot of time for hobbies.、Uh, what are your favourite films? What kind of films do I like best? Yeah, I like thrillers, suspense. That's my favourite. Oh, I don't like those. I'm no good with those. I get too scared. I don't watch any of it because I have my hands over my eyes. <laughs> so, what are your favourite hobbies, Rebecca? I want to take up self-defence. I'm starting new hobbies because I haven't really got any at the moment, apart from reading and music. But I'm going to take up self-defence and dancing classes, something like that.、Mm. I've done a sort of Middle Eastern dancing. It's like an Egyptian belly dancing, but it's not Egyptian. It's a kind of country form where your hips actually go down instead of upwards, and you're dressed in lots of clothes. You're not showing any stomach or anything. <laughs> so yeah, I did that for a little while, but I get fed up with things really, get bored and move on. I did yoga, and that annoyed me.、It、used to make me anxious. Did it? Yoga made you anxious. Yeah, because you have to go and relax all your body, and then you go right from your toes up your body, and then you go down it and relax it again. And I used to think, oh my god, I've got to relax it all again, and it made me anxious. <laughs> right. <laughs> Ask each other about things you hope to achieve in the future.、Hmm? Rebecca, what would you like to achieve in the future? Um. Well, I want to be rich.、Mm -hmm. I've. I've got a little dream, and this won't be until I'm sixty, and I don't know what I'm going to do until I'm sixty. But when I'm sixty, I'm going to have a donkey sanctuary. <laughs> She wants to be Bridget Bardo. I'm going to live on a Greek island and wear the same dress and the same straw hat every day, and wander around on the craggy stones in the heat and under the olive trees with my donkeys and my goats. <laughs> that sounds lovely. Oh, I really fancy that. What about you? I want to be happy. I want. I don't know, really. I think I just want to be happy more than anything else. I mean, ideally, I'd like to carry on with further studies. I wouldn't mind doing my PhD. I'd like to do that, but I just haven't got time.、Hmm. But I will. I'll be a wacky old lady in jeans and blue rinse hair and do my PhD at seventy or eighty. <laughs> I'd like to do another degree because I did English, and I'd like to do one in history, and then do a master's degree from that rather than a master's in English. History is more interesting to me at the moment, and I want to travel. How would you feel about living or working abroad permanently? Absolutely love to. Yeah, I'd like to definitely for a few years. That's one of my ambitions. I'd like to end my days in a foreign country. I think in England we like work all the time, and really people, especially in Mediterranean countries, people work to live, and we live to work, and we need to get back to that same kind of ethos that they have. It would just be nice to live somewhere where it's always sunny and warm and and more relaxed. As you say, you can get like stressed out if you're at work, but then when you've finished work, you know you've got a good few hours of sunlight left and you can go to the beach. <laughs> Unless you went to Iceland, of course. I wouldn't do that though. I'd move to a hot country. <laughs> <laughs> and then, what are your earliest memories of school? My earliest memory of school is when I was in the infants. I was about four or five. I went to a very strict school, and every term you've got a report to take home. And I remember the teacher saying, "Whatever you do, you must not open this report. You must go home to your parents." And well, you know, I just thought that's a cue to open it. So I remember opening up the report, and then she hit me, whacked me hard with a ruler. Really? Yeah, I really hated her. That's one of my earliest memories. <sighs> my earliest memory is in infant school again, and I was doing this maths problem, and I really couldn't work it out. And everyone else had gone off to watch this TV program that we were allowed to watch once a week. And the teacher said, "You've got to stay here and finish this." And I thought, right then. I got up and I walked home. It was a good mile back to my house, and I got there, and my mum was, "What are you doing here?" And at the school, they had everyone looking round the school grounds for me, and the headmaster was looking in the street for me. <laughs> Did you get told off? Yeah, absolutely, by everyone. <laughs>